Thank you, Don and uh, Larry. I did hear you. I'm going to keep it snappy. Um, but before I do start, I just want to thank both Larry and the and Don and Martin and the and the UCSD and Salk teams for letting me and and Life Technologies participate in this groundbreaking work. It gives us both purpose and urgency in being involved in this important work. So uh, I'm going to speak briefly about uh, what we're going to do to generate human astrocytes uh, for these studies. Okay. So Life Technologies, the industry partner here, is uh, located locally here in, uh, in Carlsbad, California. Um, we do have deep expertise internally uh, on both embryonic stem cell biology, neural cell biology, and all the intermediaries. Um, we also are the leading supplier of stem cell research tools and reagents, um, so we have some experience in that space. And we have both the regulatory and, uh, and scientific expertise to provide products and services that are designed to make that transition from the bench to the clinic easier, keeping in mind the regulatory guidances uh, for somatic cell therapies. And then finally, um, we do have internal expertise as well as developing clinically compliant processes and generating the tools and reagents that are needed to take things seamlessly into uh, clinical trials. So our key objectives um, for the work we're going to be doing, as I just mentioned, is to generate a clinically compliant process for gener generating astrocyte precursors. Um, we will be taking multiple stem cell lines and we'll be generating precursors from these for use internally and at UCSD and at the SALT where they'll be extensively characterized. Um, we will look at both their identity and their molecular characterization very deeply. Um, and the final goal here really is to assess their safety and function in the UCSD uh, ALS models. Um, the process we're developing has to be amenable to transitioning from the research bench into clinical studies. So that will be our primary focus to make sure we build in those uh, appropriate processes. Uh, we will do this uh, being aware of the FDA guidelines for somatic cell therapies. Um, and we want to make sure that this process is scalable. So from these small scale studies initially to generating enough cells for treating patients. And finally, uh, I think very important and underlying all of this is building into those processes uh, the tools and process for enhancing safety and reducing the risk of uh, ulterior events. So the workflow is very simple. We'll be receiving multiple cell lines. We will expand these embryonic cell lines and bank these lines. And in addition to banking, we'll be characterizing the cells and qualifying the cells at each stage along this process. We will then take those expanded embryonic stem cells. We will transition them uh, and, and differentiate them to the neural stem cell stage, where again, they will be banked and they will be also characterized. Uh, and then finally, we will take those cells and differentiate them into astrocyte precursors where they will also be banked and uh, again, we'll, be, we'll assess these cells at each of these points in time to make sure they express the proteins and the characteristics that we expect for these different cell lineages. And while these are not the cells that will go into the animal models, we still will go the extra step of taking those astrocyte precursors and culturing them and differentiating them into astrocytes to demonstrate very simply that the cells we're going to be delivering for the animal studies and for molecular characterization have the potential to differentiate into the cells that we think will mediate the effect in, uh, in vivo. So once we've generated these cells, we'll be sending the samples to UCSD and the SALT for molecular characterization as well as the animal studies that, have, that will be discussed shortly. Um, Based on all this data, the molecular characterization, the engraftment in the animals, the ability to expand these cells at scale, uh, to, and, and their potential to differentiate in astrocytes, then UCSD and the team will choose a cell line that will then go back through this process at scale under a GMP clinically compliant process so that we can now put together this data package we can submit to the FDA to enable us to move into clinical studies. 
So I just want to uh, end here with uh, the, the, the bullet point I made earlier about building in safety into this process. <clears throat> there are many components, many ways of building in safety. One way we're going to do this is by using what we consider regulatory friendly tools and reagents, things that um, are built in line with FDA guidelines for the kinds of ancillary materials used to generate cells for clinical trials. Um, we will use wherever possible the best chemically defined animal origin free, xeno free tools and reagents to reduce risk of contamination to improve the safety uh, profile. And we will do appropriate safety testing on all these, uh, the reagents that we use throughout the process. Uh, in addition, we will be uh, storing the cells that are controlled uh, storage to make sure they are, you know, we have our eye on them, we monitor them so that as they move through this process and get closer to potential human application that they meet uh, FDA guidelines. We will screen all these cell lines for adventitious agents, uh, for sterility, for mycoplasma, fungal and bacterial contamination to make sure they're safe. And and we will go the extra step of using one of our, our, our bead-based technologies for removing uh, unwanted cells from the final cell preparation um, and enriching the final pool of cells that will go into these, uh, these studies to reduce the risk of having uh, undesired cells uh, uh, transplanted. And then very, f and finally again, the, our overarching focus here is to focus on safety and the intelligent selection uh, of the tools and reagents we use for this process because we want to make sure the process of generating the data and taking that data and presenting to the FDA allows us to move as rapidly as possible from these preclinical studies into human trials.